under the bridge at Kanda gives you a picture of the state of mental health here in Ghana. Today on Nice Ride, we take you to Techima in the Bonahaf region and also to the major mental health institution here in Ghana as we try to put the spotlight on the rights of persons living with mental disability. My name is Gifty Andorpia. This is Ice Rice, the show that teaches you about your rights and responsibilities. Welcome to the show. Behind me is the Accra Psychiatric Hospital, Ghana's first psychiatric home. It is also popularly called asylum, meaning it is a place that should provide very good care and refuge for people with mental disability. But the big question is, are the people in there receiving the quality care that they should? Definitely no. The state of mental health care as of now is not good at all. And I've always given this figure that if you ask me on a scale of 10, 10 being very good, 0 being very poor, or 1 being very poor, what would I say? 2, maximum 3 over 10. That is how bad mental health care is in the country. Why would you do that? Bad because... We have about, for every 100 people who require mental health care, only two are really getting it. Even for those who access the care, who come to psychiatric hospitals, the quality of care that they get, very few mental health personnel, um, few psychiatrists for a country of 24 million, 25 million people, we have only 11 partisan psychiatrists. So that comes to roughly one psychiatrist per two million. Woefully bad. Not even one occupational therapist in the public health sector. And yet you need mental health, uh, the psychiatrist, the psychiatric nurse, the clinical psychologist, occupational therapist, social welfare officer, at the minimum, as the five-member core team. And yet we don't have the full complement of the personnel. So the treatment that we are giving is also inadequate. Again, it is like our mental health care in the country is largely give medication, give medicine. Med The World Health Organization estimates that 650,000 people in Ghana suffer severe forms of mental disorder. That is, 14 Accra Sports Stadia filled with people suffering from psychiatric disorders. Okay, then the woman already, right? This comes back, right? Unfortunately, about 98% of people with mental disability in Ghana do not have access to treatment very few mental health services. The few psychiatric hospitals, three in number, are all located down south, Accra and Kaful Pantam, all within two hours drive of each other. Down south, so a coastal belt. So middle belt, upper belt, nothing. So if anybody is there who requires serious, uh, who requires submission for serious mental health care, it means you need to bring the person all the way from Tatale, Zabzugu, wherever, down Accra, and how many people can afford to come? Imagine the transportation costs. So even if you bring the person here, you can't come for regular visits. So it leaves access to the majority of Ghanaians very poor. It will be fair to state that some inmates of the three psychiatric institutions are fortunate. Indeed, they are fortunate enough to rest on these sick beds. <laughs> and also not having drugs needed for treatment. With very few personnel, small budget to manage the hospital, and constant shortage of injectables to calm patients, Dr. Kwesio says, says it is always a miracle running the facility. Well, this is a special ward here, as the name suggests, we see so many special cases, and people here have the tendency to be violent. And this medication, which is called the injectable, is needed to calm them down. But as I speak now, this ward has no injectable. We don't have the injectables. And the ministry is aware of it? The ministry is aware. What are they saying now? Well, it's in the pipeline. It's in the pipeline. They are trying to make efforts to get, us, to get the medications. So, um, the patient... Not long ago... Uh, not long ago, uh, Breast Care International, Breast Care International is an NGO that is taking care of breast cancer. So they get their medications from U.S. They have the links there. They get medications for breast for cancer. But they understand that if you have cancer, a woman has cancer. That woman can also have depression. That woman can also have hypertension. That woman can also have numerous other problems. And so when they procure the medicines, when they get their medicines, it's not only for breast cancer, strictly speaking, but all other related issues. And when these drugs come, then they decide that, well, we are not in mental health, so the depression we can't administer. So they bring them to us. 
And a lot of times, it is the medicine we get from them that enable us, the medicines that enable us to be able to go maybe how far into, into the year, about six months. Otherwise, within three months, we would have run short of medicine. Some who don't make it to the three public psychiatric institutions find alternative solution largely from prayer camps. <laughs> For 25 years, Elizabeth Sewa has been searching for mental health healing for her son. I took my son to Kentai in Tachima before moving him to Cherubim Church at Antua in Kumase. Also at Antua, I sent him for deliverance at a church called Faith. If fasting kills, I would have died a long time ago because I fasted on many occasions. I was made to sleep on a mountain for seven days where pineapples have been peeled into a pot with water, which I drank whenever I was hungry. So whenever I passed urine, I saw blood in it as well as blood tools. Sewa has not given up. She still hopes that one day God's miracle will find her son. <laughs> Prophet Ketua Owusu at Stachiman has been running a prayer center for over 28 years. He claims he has healed countless persons with mental disability. Amen. Amen. service, a member of the church has a testimony. By the grace of God, the man of God invited me to bring my son who was having mental issues for deliverance. I brought him there and thankfully he has been delivered from his troubles. My son is right here with me as I speak. When I brought him to the place, I made the vow that if my son is truly delivered, I will make a pledge of 500 cities and 100 cities for my son, which I have brought today. You cannot be faint-hearted when waiting for healing at a prayer camp. Many times persons with mental disability are chained to trees and exposed to harsh weather conditions. It can be lonely and depressing. Oh, okay, you say unconducive. You are feeling on what? Unconducive. Why? Uh, to the fact that I, I, I had been bitten several times by the mosquitoes. And so, uh, so the, the, this thing, it ties me a lot. It's very, very dicey. It's tight. What is tight? The, the, this thing, the metal, yeah. the way it has been made. It tights, tightens me a lot. It hurts me a lot. You see, all these places. It hurts me a lot. The other time they put it for for this one. So Why did you come here? We are coming for cureness. During the evening, I just food the distance, the rubber. Then I sleep on it and then use this as my cover blanket. For the, this place, for instance, if you are here, you are here alone. Loneliness, it creates a lot of confusion. You have nobody to converse with. I feel very, very, I feel cold. Even the last time, let me say about so five days ago, uh, you bear witness with me that it rained very, very heavily. All the rain fell on me. It fell on me very, very, very severely. And I was very, very, very cold. But wasn't able to report to anybody. Kofi may be mentally ill, but he knows exactly what is happening around him. He knows his rights and dignity are being violated, but he can't complain. Just like George Sapong, he is also patiently waiting for healing. I want God to deliver me from the situation, from the sickness. 
that I will be healed and no more be remembered about my sickness again. Osafa Ketua explains chaining persons with mental disability is very essential to the treatment. <laughs> In this world, there are certain things that happen in the womb that causes wound in the brain, which leads to people going mad. Sometimes, this mental illness is spiritual in nature. It could be treated and comes back again. Doctors will even try their best to treat it, but it won't work. People lose their mind as a result of refusing to become fetish priests in their families. We smoking too can cause people to go mad. As for the we smokers, they sometimes attack people with knives, so they are chained for one week or two. We managed to convince Osofu Ketua to unchain Kofi so he could move freely. He obliges, but after intense persuasion. <laughs> Kofi smells freedom and he is very happy. As to whether prayer or fasting will save George Sapong and Kofi, time will tell. Rights violations in various prayer camps have to be carefully examined with patients chained to trees, forced to starve under the guise of fasting and exposed to the vagaries of the weather and other dehumanizing conditions. Chief psychiatrist Dr. Akwesiose believes the new mental health law will improve mental health care. In any case, and that is why we now have the mental health law which will address that issue. So we'll raise our own money enough to be able to procure what we need and go through our own procurement cycle. So the mental health law to me is a panacea for the numerous problems that we have. So if you ask me how are we doing in terms of what we're doing right now, it's very bad, but with respect to the fact that we have the law in place now, which we are beginning to execute, it looks very bright. The future looks very bright. Three to five years, mental health care will be world-class mental health care. But now, very bad. But when will patients with mental health problems get respite soon for more mistreatment in both psychiatric homes and prayer camps? <laughs> So it's another warm welcome to you here on Ice Ride, where we teach you about your rights and responsibilities. Forgive us if our stories continue to make you sad, but these are things that are happening. As we have seen in George and Kofi's story, mental health is still a big issue, and we need to continue talking about it until, as we always say, something change well with me to discuss this particular video that we've just seen and the broader issue about mental health is humphrey coffee humphrey coffee is the executive secretary of mental health society of ghana they are mainly into advocacy and they work hand in hand with an ngo called basic needs thank you very much humphrey for joining thank us you. thank you now I know that you deal with this issue every moment of your life. Why is mental health in this country in such a bad state? Well, thank you very much. Uh, ever since the Mental Health Law Act 846 was passed in, um, on the 19th of May 2012, mm. um, very little has happened. Uh, of course, it took government to see to the establishment of the board. It took uh, government to also ensure that uh, the very resource that will be needed to facilitate the work of the authority was um, available. To a large extent, government hasn't shown any serious commitment mm. in the sense that the mental health fund, which is supposed to see the operationalization of the law, government hasn't made any commitment. It's only DFID that has done some commitment. Mm. Government is supposed to show the way for other donors to support. It's not the donors to start, for government mm. to finally support. I saw in the um, 2014-15 budget, and I saw that of the Ministry of Health didn't have any component of the establishment of the fund. Hmm. That tells you the level of seriousness of government to ensure that uh, mental health is uh, revamped or overhauled in the country. I mean, mere law does not say anything. Hmm. It takes the commitment of government to ensure that it's fully implemented. So we have the law, but very little is still being done. Right. So we still have the law is in place. And I would just like for you to briefly tell us what different the law seeks to do with mental health in Ghana. Because, like you're saying, the law is in place, yes. but 
it has to do with implementation. Right. And as you've indicated uh, clearly, it doesn't seem like much has been done. Yeah. What course, difference is the law supposed to make? Yes, this law is uh, a, a complete shift from the old law that was passed, the mental law in 1972. Mm. I mean, this one focuses more on the rights of people with mental disorders. It talks about improved services, integrated services, mm. primary regional health level services, you know, um, ensuring that the primary health service is skilled up so that their mental health is incorporated, which mm. is a, div a far improved uh, law as All compared right. to the 1972 one. It talks about um, the establishment of a review tribunal that would ensure that people whose rights are violated have their um, rights redressed or mm -hmm. their issues redressed. Currently, we don't have the tribunal, review tribunal. It's also talking about a review committee that is supposed to go through, I mean, go around the country to ensure that even prayer camps, traditional healers are complying mm -hmm. with best standards and practices in terms of treatment of people with mental disorders so that uh, rights of people with mental disorders are not abused. I would like for you to deal specifically with what the law that you have in your hand says specifically about um, prayer camps because in this story we see that we see our two gentlemen who you know, are seeking some help from the prayer camps. How does the law incorporate them, uh, these prayer camps and other healing centers in? And who is supposed to ensure that w uh, what the law says is done by these institutions? Yes, the mental health authority are supposed to ensure that the content of the law is in fully implemented with support from government. That is why it's supposed to see a visiting committee that will ensure that best practices are adhered to at the prayer camps. Because whether you like it or not, Ghanaians as we are, Africans as we are, if anybody has a mental health condition, normally the first place or the first point of call is a prayer camp. You cannot say that the person will normally go to the hospital. It is believed that people are paying for the atonement of their ancestors and that is why they are suffering from a certain condition. So let's see uh, whether uh, there is a prayer camp or there is a faith-based organization that we can attend to such that if it is not working then we decide to go for the orthodox mm. practice. That brings me to the point, of, it makes me believe that it's more, the problem is more of an attitudinal, a societal problem, and that it shouldn't really take government, should it? it it's, government has its role to play, because we cannot close down the prayer camps. Mm -hmm. If you even close them down, people will go underneath and visit them. So what government has to do is to ensure that the enforcement of the law such like that they comply with best practices. Right. There are no violations. They comply. Of course, you can pray for the person, but you combine that of the scientific and mm -hmm. the spiritual. But if you focus on the spiritual and it has the, probably the scientific bait which has to be addressed, uh, but you don't allow them to take medications because you think that uh, prayer will do the, the trick mm -hmm. and it's not doing the trick. Finally, the case worsens and they find their way at the hospital. Probably at the time that they get to the hospital, the situations are worse. Mm. But if it's a combination of both, I mean, they have trainings to the extent that those who violate it are also brought to try it, to be tried. I mean, um, there should be cases where prayer camp leaders have been arrested. I mean, they've been put before the court. But in this country, and you know, because you have dealt with this situation, half the time or more than half the time, the families reject them and leave them at the prayer camp. So at the end of the day, there's nobody taking that decision for them. In this case, it, um, it's a bit dicey for me. Who is violating their rights? The person meting out the action or b because he's taking yes. the decision on behalf of the person who cannot take the decision yes. or the family who has, who has rejected uh, the sick person? It's, it's the prayer camp overseers. They are the ones. Because even if the person is ignorant or the family is ignorant and he brings the patient to you, you need to tell him what is right. Because the thinking is that there is some spirit that, look, you have to exercise. Anything that you do to exercise him from these spirits, please do. Can That's you blame them for that? Yes, of course. Um, it is about the mindset. Isn't it a matter of belief? Believe, the belief system is one. Uh, the mindset is the other bit. And even the fact that the prayer camps have admitted that, look, it is through that, what you said, that I should do X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. that will help the patient. Then you also come to understand, that, okay, if that is the way out, then let's go with it. But if you tell me that, no, we here, we combine both scientific and spiritual, 
I'll be doing my bit, but the community psychiatric nurse will also be coming here mm -hmm. to be administering medication on him so that both will work out. The, I'm not sure the, the family will say, no way, don't apply scientific medicine. The family would have left them. They, what happens is that they abandon them. So That's my true. concern would be how this law yes. will be able to target yes. families who just go and drop their, their, their family members and just leave and how it is going to regulate um, these mental health facilities including our psychiatries yeah. because the psychiatries are no better anyway that's true so what specifically does the law say about you know going forward yeah regulating this that's it and the law talks situation. about voluntary and involuntary treatment okay the person is not really ready and he's lucid enough to say that look I don't think I want to be here you can force the person and that is why the review tribunal is there. If you force the person to be where he's not supposed to be, he can report you and, I mean, the law will take its course. Who is going to report who? Well, the, the victim or the family. The family and even somebody standing by can report the matter. So you mean that yes. any individual who can, can call that. yourself a concerned citizen can go out and defend exactly. the right of a mentally exactly. ill person. Exactly. Do you That's see that happening in this country? Well, for now, we don't have the tribunal and we don't know how it's going to go. But the shard is there. I mean, people can go to the shard. It's the level of understanding and education that looks shard will be able to do the trick for people with mental disorders, which, mm -hmm. is, the, which is the other bit of it. Because for the courts, people believe that if you go to the court, you will spend too much time and you waste your time. But if Strad were to be doing the work as expected, as a legal aid, you mm -hmm. know, kind of doing some pro bono cases for people who need them. I think that that will show the way for people to follow. But aside that, if the review tribunal is set up, and people know that, look, there is a review tribunal in the various regions, and of course the review tribunal is not going to be centralized. Mm -hmm. You have them in the various regions. If the issues happen at the region, you will... Um, I let the review tribunal in that region. Mm. So it will kind of lessen and it will put some fear of some fear in in the in the prayer camp leaders, the traditional healers, the faith based organizations that look there is a tribunal. Mm. In Ghana now, we fear the word tribunal than even the courts. <laughs> when they said, Hey, you'll be sent to the tribunal, it's like the tribunal looks stronger. Even so you think that if this these tribunals are yes. to be set up, then it's going to help us uh, change the face of mental health in Ghana? To a large extent, to a large extent, because it wouldn't take you that money to go to the tribunal. All right, so let's get a bit specific. I, and I'm fascinated about this law. I've dealt a bit with mental health, yeah. and I know that it is such a challenge. Yeah. But specifically, what can we tell our audience that this new law, which excites all of us, is saying about dealing with mental health generally? Yeah, like I said, the new law, 8 Act, 846, is a complete departure of the 1972 Mental Health Act. And mm -hmm. basically focusing on basic human rights okay. and, and in, you with your permission, it for us. yes, I would want to uh, quote section 55.1, which says, and I quote, a person with mental disorders has a right to enjoy a decent life as normal and as full as possible, which includes the right to education, vocational training, leisure, recreational activities, full employment and participation in civil, economic, social, cultural, political activities, and any specific limitation on these rights shall be in accordance with the, with an assessment of the of, of capacity on court. Mm. Basically what he's saying is that the fact that people do say that this person is mentally ill so uh, why should we con consider a mentally ill person in this? For example, even the voting, you would have heard that it's talking about political rights. The, the issue of um, unsound mind in Article 42 which deprives people with mental disorders from voting and even standing for election does not come to play here because uh, the person having been through the psychiatric hospital and for that matter being a user does not debar him from thinking and the fact that he's been through it does not mean that he doesn't know what it's about. Are we not being able to go away a bit from, let, let's, let's look at what we do to people who violate because we are looking at protecting uh, mentally ill people but what do we do and what can we do about let's say um, health, uh, health personnel or um, leaders of these church uh, prayer camps yeah. who we can ascertain are violating the right of mentally ill people. Yeah. We need to build their capacity, sensitize them on their, or disseminate the mental health law 
among these people. You know, uh, for the prayer camps, they have associations and all those things. We need mm. to bring them together. And that is one of the roles of the Mental Health Authority, bringing them together, sensitizing them or disseminating the aspect of the mental law, mental health law that affects them. So that mm. it's not like they don't know what is in the law. Oh, right. Even the general public, there are so many things in there that they need to know about people with mental disorders and what they can do with them and what they cannot. So there is a lot that we need to tell people about, and it's all about advocacy. Well, you, you, are, you are done your advocacy, but yes. who is responsible, specifically, if it's government is too big, yes. who in government, where specifically in government should we demand that the rights of these the mental uh, health people? The mental health authority, and the, the law is clear as to the role of the mental health authority in ensuring that there is an, a total overhaul, a revamp of mental health services across the country. Mm. You know, they have a big challenge, but government has to support them with this attitude of government not showing commitment mm. will not help in any way to improve mental health services. This is supposed to be an integrated mental health service mm. where the primary regional health care um, centers are integrated fully to the extent that even the chip compound has some level of mental health services. Mm. That is the barest minimum where mental health as, uh, services could be accessed. The, the you know? more yes. And if you look at the broader picture, the law is saying that there should be about all regional hospitals and district mm. hospitals should establish psychiatry wings. Right. The regional hospitals, a psychiatry wing of about 10 beds. In the district hospital, a psychiatry wing of about five, five beds, mm. beginning to integrate mental health services into the mainstream, I mean, mainstreaming mental health services into right. the um, general practices. But what about the formal psychiatrists who are supposed to be rendering better services yeah. to people with mental disability? It's not, the situation is not different in the psychiatry hospitals. Uh, patients are subjected, they are subjected to beatings. It hasn't stopped. Those who are very aggressive are tamed by some, I mean, meeting out some lashes to them to mm. ensure that they comply. Worst of it is that even if you go to the Akasa Karazo, there are no medicines. So for me, I think that government hasn't shown enough. The mere passage of the law, which was done by the ex-president, mm. I mean, showed, I mean, demonstrated that there was something that government wanted to do. But there's still much, much there's more too much to be done. To be done. I, yes. I feel frustration in what yes, you're saying, but what do you do? What are the steps that as an individual you can take to, in your quest to make the situation better? Yeah, we continue to advocate and put pressure on the Ministry of Health. Can we not go to court? Well, we can. We can. There are various committees that are supposed to be working. If they are not working, for instance, and even the tribunal, the fact that the tribunal is not set up yet is enough Indictment, indictment on the institutions that are to the supposed extent to that you can, anybody can take government on for not establishing it for now let's take your final words Humphrey. so for, for 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 mental health society of ghana we believe that the law has come well that is good but we have so many laws on our shelves that very little or nothing is done mm -hmm. but we don't think that the mental health law will have to belong to such a category of people i mean laws in ghana uh, we are asking government to show direction and commitment in this 2016 uh, elections, we will see what government will tell us, will tell us has done so far, mm -hmm. and will do again. Because we hold government responsible. The fact that the law has been passed was not enough mm -hmm. for us to see a whole, total overhaul. Probably, we believe that it's mm -hmm. supposed to be gradual, but the, the commitment we are not seeing. Same. Medicines are not available, and the worst of it was when the central medical stores got burnt. Mm. That inferno happened. But even before the inferno, we didn't have medicines in that, in that store. Well, Humphrey Kofi has been sharing a lot of insights with us. And as I always say on the show, I always learn a lot and I hope that you do too. But before we wrap up, let me tell you something that happened in the Gambia. An individual took on the government and took the government to the African Commission on Human Rights. At the end of the day, there was a favorable ruling. And that was that no government could bank on the excuse of lack of resources why rights of individuals who are mentally ill will be violated. That could be tried here in Ghana. We could take on the system and that is what this show seeks to do, to empower you, the citizen, to take on the government and to demand our right. This has been Ice Right. Many thanks for your time. Let's see you again next week for some more exciting edition. Thank you.